Hi Pisces, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I am going to be doing your June 14th, 2022 Supermoon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. This cleanse and meditation will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. So let's see, Pisces, the energy we should be mindful of. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. So we have the star, which is interesting. Okay. And why is this so interesting is because this super moon is in Sagittarius, but the energy that comes forward really powerfully during this time, and even a few days before, is that our dreams become more real than reality. So when we have the star coming forward, this is what we wish for. This is what we want. This is what we deeply desire. And so what we have to be mindful of is our dreams becoming more real than reality, just kind of taking over, becoming super intense and driving us in a direction that might not be healthy for us or we're, we might not be ready for or we feel in conflict with. Like, why is my reality this way? And yet I deeply want to be headed this way. So it can get us to be a bit upset, a bit overwhelmed, a bit in odds with ourselves. So just be, be mindful of this. Okay. This is also Aquarius energy. So if you're born on the cusp with Aquarius or you have Aquarius energy in your chart, I highly suggest you, you watch the Aquarius, you know, video it has a huge message in it that anybody who has Aquarius in their chart should definitely be mindful of. All right. Definitely be made aware of. So let's look at our chakra energy, angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly. This is determination. This is the solar plexus chakra. Our gut is really leading us. And there is an energy here with, with the salmon of rebirth, but also of determination. I am headed to where I want to be. I am going to where I need to be for me to be reborn, to change, to, to grow, to become. And that's going to be really important. We have gut feels about things. We have to listen to them. We definitely have to listen to them during this moon and during this time. So let's see what the moon has to say for herself. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Okay, so let's see what the cards have to say. So we're being told right here for where we are now, it is telling us step out of your comfort zone. This is going to be a time of challenge. This is the termination. This is the, you know, driving force to move us forward. Step out of your comfort zone. That is going to be super powerful for us. 
our challenge is going to be the quiet, the darkness, the silence, being alone with our own thoughts, being connected with ourselves. Now, remember, as as I stated before, you know, this is a time when dreams become more real to us than reality. This can also be a time where we're very swayed by media and we get very involved in media, meaning, you know, any type of social media, but also any type of entertainment, any type of, you know, movies and books or anything that we can just get completely engrossed in, we will get completely engrossed in. Mercury is entering into Gemini and this makes communication and travel so much more important to us than, than it has been. So when we have communication coming forward we want to talk to others but we also want deeper ideas deeper knowledge coming our way with travel we can want to travel into other worlds other books you know other movies you know other whatever it is that you're into you know anime manga whatever it is like we can want to travel deeply into these things so with Sagittarius, Sagittarius is the philosopher that's where the moon is the sun is in Gemini that's the questioner so these two signs are sister signs. So it can either be a very harmonious time for us because the sisters can be getting along really well, or it could be a cantankerous time. It could be a time of tension. So just be aware of this. We have to be aware of the energy around us. We are very affected by the moon Pisces. We are represented by the moon in the major arcana. So it represents the essence of us. The darkness that's coming in, you know, with with the full moon coming forward, it can also mean that we are apprehensive about the new moon on the 30th and everything that we are learning up into that new moon. It brings us to what we're focusing on. And this is don't let your past hold you back. And this is, oh my gosh. So what's so interesting is we have the North and the South lunar node right here. And it is said that our destiny echoes between the North and the South lunar node. And between them is our challenges, the darkness. Our challenge is to listen, is to hear what is, is being said, where, what we're focusing on. Where we are now is saying, step out of your comfort zone, right? What we're focusing on is not letting the past hold us back. There are things that have happened, and they have happened. We have to move forward from them. We can keep on playing it over and over again in our mind. We can keep ourselves held back by tragedy, doubt, fear, heartbreak, pain, disappointment. We can, and plenty of people do. But spirit wants more for you. There, there needs to be more for you as you move forward, as you obtain what it is that you want and what it is that you're seeking. Now, our past is all about creation. How are we creating our past? What is the creative energy we're bringing out, forward, bringing out? You know, what is it that we're looking for? Where is it that we're headed? This creative energy is astoundingly important to us. You know, creation... I almost... I'm seeing somebody taking a paintbrush and just splashing it over... I don't know if it's somebody doing, you know, abstract paint work or if it if it just feels like somebody took over what you were trying to create. But our challenge here as we move forward is to understand that as we are creating our world, divinity is also creating our world with us. So there have been challenges that have come forward that have made us feel like we can't create the world that we want. Stop being so hard on yourself. Stop giving up on yourself. Don't be so hell-bent on one way of achieving goals. There are numerous, numerous ways. So the past comes in and it's all about creation. And it's the power of your creative mind. It's the power of the force of your creative will. There's, there's been so much that you've been learning. Even if you're, you're thinking, well, you know, I'm a mathematician. I'm a scientist. You know, I'm not creative in that, in that way. You are creative. And this time, what you have been living through Everyone, every, every single Pisces, what you have been living through is, is giving you an insight that you, you need, whether you wanted to live through it or not. It's having you see things in a way that it's like, oh, oh, that breaks down that wall or, oh, that, that moves past that barrier. It moves us to our strength, which is to look at the big picture. No, it is to take aim. It says here, luck is on your side. It's time to take aim. The full moon in Sagittarius says, look at the bigger picture. This is the new moon in Sagittarius. So the Sagittarius energy is very powerful here. And there's a sense of luck is on your side. Like there, there's just, I don't know if you have a tendency to say, oh, I'm not lucky. And people look at you and they're like, Pisces, are you kidding me? I have a brother who's a Pisces and he will say, I'm not lucky. Like I'm not lucky. Yet when we were little, he went all, all the raffles. Like he would always win something. I wouldn't. And he would. So when he says he's not lucky, I'm like, yes, you are. You are profoundly lucky. You just don't see it. And that's what I'm seeing here. Our strength is our luck. 
and yet we don't we don't always see it. There's there's like a darkness, there's a shadow over us just kind of blocking our sight. So just be aware of that, that what you're seeing and what other people see, not really meshing up at times. It moves us to our near future, which is resilience. We are finding out and we are really acknowledging and realizing that we are a heck of a lot stronger than we ever thought we were. The resilience is I carry my world tree on my back. I carry my creativity, myself, my essence, my soul, my desires on my back and they are leading me forward. And I am leading me forward to that place where I can put down my world tree and I can plant it. I can plant who I am and what I want and I can be guided by it. It moves us to our suggested approach which is work through your fear. We, we don't want to. <laughs> we don't want to. I mean, it's so much easier to ignore our fears and put up walls. Here, it's like work through your fears, work through your doubts, work through your apprehension, work through your chaos, because it's really, really important. It brings us to what we need to know, and it's that we're blossoming. We're blossoming into ourselves. It doesn't matter our age. It doesn't matter where we are in our lives. We are blossoming into ourselves. There's some sort of growth and revelation that is coming forward. Now, our hopes and our fears are take time out to breathe. Take time to breathe out. Take time to relax, to center yourself, to see yourself, to know what it is that you desire, want, and need, but also to relieve yourself of stress, especially in the shoulder area. I see you carrying a lot of stress there and you hold it. It's like your shoulders go like right up under your ears. Stop, stop. Just relax your shoulders, relax yourself, let yourself breathe, let yourself be centered because it's going to be really important. You are psyching yourself out and I don't know why. I don't know why right now. It's almost like, it's like the dream of what would be and where we are right now and it just kind of feels overwhelming. It can feel hopeless. It can just feel like there's so much more to go or there's, there's so much to do to get to what I really want and yet we have to look at the blessings that we have. We have to look at the beauty that is a part of us. We have to look at you know, everything that we have been through and the fact that we have come out so strong and also look at our family lines, look at what our family has, has been through, like, you know, what we have come out of, see how strong you are Pisces, because you're underselling yourself completely to you, which is making negative self speech. And it moves us to our potential, which is the sovereignty, the queen of the moon. The, that's what these, this deck is named after her, you know, the queen of the moon comes forward. It's sacred feminine energy profoundly. It is a sense that this moon is sovereign. It is a super moon. It is illuminating. It is brilliant. It is beautiful. I don't know where you guys are, but here where I live, you can see the moon, you know, during the day. You can see the moon at night. It shines through like a fairy tale. We're embracing the sovereignty of ourselves. We're embracing the power and the beauty and, and, and the brilliance. And that is super important. That is our potential future. It's like, I'm putting the crown on me. I'm crowning myself. So let's see what the tarot has to say. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Okay, so where we are now is the Queen of Pentacles. Again, that sacred feminine energy coming in. I love doing this exercise when we have either sacred feminine or sacred masculine energy coming forward to see which energy you are most comfortable with, okay, and that you most readily let into your world. Visualize the parent that you are most comfortable with or the caregiver, the person who raised you that you are the most comfortable with, the influential person in your life who you are the most comfortable with. That's the energy you're going to naturally gravitate towards. Now, if it was neither, if you don't have anyone, okay, that's going to make things a little bit trickier. If you have both, all right, that's going to mean that you can easily step into both realms of energy, which is rarer. So if you have trouble connecting with either one, this means that the 
the Queen of Pentacles coming in, saying nurture your prosperity, nurture your wealth, is something you need to meditate on, is something you need to connect with. If you are more connected with sacred feminine energy, this is going to be something easier for you to nurture. It's like a slow, caring, gentle, you know, embrace of wealth and prosperity and bounty and abundance and a sense of, of dignity, respect and determination leading us forward towards our success. Now, if it's masculine energy that we're more connected with, we need to kind of soften out the edges to it, not be so, I want to say bluntly logical, look a little bit more of, of on the feeling side. I know this is all quote unquote feminine energy, but that's what we're dealing with right now. So here it's kind of like, let things kind of bleed outside the lines, let things be a little bit more messy, a little bit more chaotic because we're embracing a natural flow of things, which doesn't have to be so, so constructed, so, so formed. The Queen of Pentacles is telling us that there's prosperity, success, bounty guiding us forward. And we need to embrace that. We just absolutely need to embrace that. We need to nurture it. And we need not to be, again, so hard on ourselves. This is with us stepping out of our comfort zone and stepping into the realm of the saver of money, you know, of the responsible kind of elder when it comes to prosperity, when it comes to success. And it can be that we have a really great time with money. We know how to spend it. But now it's like know how to save it. Also know how to look for quality, not quantity. It brings us then to our challenge and our challenge is the darkness. Our challenge is listening to everybody's ideas. It's uh, no, no, it's not. Okay. So our challenge is when the world is silence, we hear too much. And I know that sounds really odd to say, but it's almost like we can't stop the voices in our heads. We can't stop ourselves from, you know, <coughs> excuse me, overthinking, overanalyzing, looking at things too intensely. So this is something we need to be aware of. We need to see what it is that we want, hold on to what we want and like doggedly, doggedly with determination and dedication and, you know, just that, that, you know, solar plexus chakra energy, go after what we want. It brings us then to what we're focusing on. And this is don't let the past hold you back. And there's a celebration. There's a jubilee coming forward. It's like a, a release and a success. And it's like, I've gotten there. The full moon is in Sagittarius, right? So the super moon in Sagittarius is helping us to release negative energy and become a student of our passion, what we want, what we desire, what we're looking for. It brings us to our past, which is the Ace of Cups. This is God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing us a gift just for us. We are represented by the cups in the minor arcana. So this gift of the Ace of Cups is coming in, and it's saying to us as we are creating, so much powerful energy lies within your heart. Embrace it. See it. Understand it. And as we embrace and see and are guided forward, let ourselves open to what we desire and what we need. Let ourselves open to, to, to where it is like our heart is longing to be. It's kind of like we're trying to force ourselves to walk one road and our past is like, but I've been, I've been priming you for this. Like I've been setting you up for this. Don't, don't give up. You're so close. Like don't, don't let yourself be heartbroken. It moves us to our strength, which is so interesting. Again, linking you to the Aquarius reading, this is change. The tower is coming in. It's like luck is on your side through all the change that you have been through, through all the upheaval, through all the chaos. Change happens, but you're lucky. You're lucky you have this, this power, this grace to you, Pisces. Even if you're left picking everything up, there's this like stubborn determination, focus, insight, brilliance that is like, yeah, I know. I know I'm coming out of this better. I know where I need to be. And it brings us to our near future, which is the six of swords. And, and with the resilience, it's like, I need to move forward. It's a, a sense of, we kind of think that we're, we're stopped. And it's like, no, you're going to be surprised at what, what you've been building for or building towards you are going to be surprised at the way things are moving and, and the change that things take. It moves us then to our suggested approach, which is Scorpio energy. Oh, that's so funny because this is the new moon in Scorpio. The death card is the dying away of the old self, the rebirth of the new. And it says, you know, work through your fears. We are going to be being reborn from our fears, from our doubts, from our chaos. And there's a real sense of, I didn't even know I had the strength within me. It brings us to our blossoming with the Six of Cups. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is 
this is, the past has made us who we are. We've been trying to outrun it. We've been trying to change it. We've been trying to see things differently. It's like, mm -mm. the past has made you who you are, Pisces. Wear it with pride. Be proud. It brings us to our subconscious, not our subconscious. It brings us to our hopes and our fears. We hope that we can shine with that magic, that we can be the queen of wands, that we can embrace the Sagittarius super moon energy and just radiate. But we need time to breathe out. We need time to connect with ourselves. And that breathing out is connecting with our own magic, is seeing ourselves for who we truly are, where we want to be, where we need to be. And that starts to move us forward in a very different way. But again, we need to embrace the sacred feminine energy with the queen of pentacles here at like where we are now with the queen of wands. This is saying we need to embrace reality. And remember, dreams are going to be more real to us than reality. We're ruled by Neptune. Neptune rules dreams. So it's going to be so easy to let the dreams just take over. So just be very aware of this. That Spirit is telling us, be be here, be now, be present. We hope to be present, to, to shine, to have this glory. We fear that it's always passing us by, that we're always just missing it. With the sovereignty of the moon and our potential future, it's the Ten of Pentacles, prosperity, success, abundance, coming to the completion of a cycle when it comes to money and, and seeing where it is that we need to be, seeing what it is that we desire, seeing what it is that we want and embracing that abundance, embracing that success. All right, let's look at our chakra energy, not, not our chakra energy, I love it, at our subconscious energy. So we have discernment, the full moon, surrender to the divine. Be discerning as you surrender to the divine. Be discerning as you see the spiritual energy that you need, you see the spiritual power of yourself and you surrender to where it is that you need to be, to how it is that you need to move forward, to what connects with you, to who you are. It brings us to our subconscious tarot message, which is the nine of pentacles, prosperity, success, abundance, being in the moment, really seeing us, not what anybody wants us to be, not what we dream we will one day be, but celebrating who we are and being in the moment with that as we open ourselves up, as we're guided forward, as we're, you know, just taking in us and all that we have accomplished, even if we don't think we've accomplished anything. Pisces this is saying you have. Stop being so hard on yourself. Our subconscious energy to be mindful of is the high priestess. No, not the high priestess, the high priest. This is Taurus energy. This is determined, stubborn drive. This can be somebody who makes us feel small. This can be somebody who, you know, who's trying to tell us to fit into something that isn't us. But this can also be us trying to fit into something that doesn't work. Whenever I see this, this energy that comes forward where it's like we're trying to fit ourselves into something that's wrong, it's the Cinderella story and the stepsisters. But it's the original where they cut off either the front half of their foot or the back half of their foot. So here it's like, don't, don't, don't do something so foolish. Okay, that will scar you, that will hurt you because you're trying to fit into something that just was never meant to fit in the first place. You know, it was never meant to be you. And sometimes that's really hard to come to terms with. But sometimes we're meant for a very different road than either what, you know, our parents wanted us to go down or our caregivers or even what we thought success looked like going down. And if we open ourselves to that road, it's like, oh, okay. It's scary. Yeah. But it's like, oh, okay. And we'll, we'll miss, mess up along the way. We'll miss up. But it's like, give yourself a chance. Our subconscious chakra energy is angels and masters. This is the, the soul star chakra located six inches above your crown. You're lucky. You know, it said here, luck is on your side. This is your angels wrapping you in their wings. This is you being connected and being just absolutely protected. So... Acknowledge that. Take that in. Take that in and just know that you are profoundly, profoundly blessed during this time. All right. All right, Taurus. No, all right, Taurus. All right, Pisces. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this supermoon and as we like just drink in its energy. 
So let's take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Pisces, and may you have a blessed moon.